Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're here for CONCACAF Men's Olympic Qualifying Match Day Minus One Press Conference with Canada, head coach Moral Yellow, followed by goalkeeper James Pantemis. We will, uh, the mics are open. We'll start with questions via the raised hands, and we'll start with Neil Davidson at the Canadian Press. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Richard. Um... Good afternoon, uh, Maura, or good morning, I guess. Um, this is, uh, what, the fourth game in 10 days. Uh, you're playing the host country who has an extra day's rest. Could you give us uh, your take on the degree of difficulty your team faces tomorrow? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, we're well aware of who the opponent is. Uh, it's it's the giant in CONCACAF. And, uh for us, uh, I think we're in a position where we want it to be in terms of now getting to that one game that allows us to, to go through to the Olympics. Uh, and we're looking at it uh, as that. It's a one game that anything could happen. We're preparing to play the giant. Uh, and uh, for us, it's all about now, uh, you know, reducing those spaces, denying those spaces for them to operate in and uh, being very... Uh, specific of how we attack them and how we put them under pressure in different moments. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we've never won. Canada has never won in Mexico. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for us uh, to make this happen. Thank you very much. Derek, I this post media. Hi, Mo. Uh, I just want to ask about the status of Derek Cornelius. Uh, I just wondering how he's doing and is he going to be ready to go tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, you know, Derek, uh, he got treatment uh, yesterday. Uh, so it's uh, progressing uh, every day. Uh, today we'll have training. He'll get an opportunity to, um, you know, to test it, to see how it, it reacts under a little bit of stress. Um, you know, we feel that uh, at this point, we're from the medical team, they're very confident that he'll be available. Um, so hopefully things go well today and that he'll be ready for the game. Thank you very much. We'll go to Adam Jenkins from One Soccer. Thank you very much, Richard, and good morning, Morrow. Uh, Mara, I just wanted to ask you about the story that was published yesterday in ESPN. Um, FIFA apparently has opened an, an investigation against Mexico after anti-gay and, and homophobic chants were audible during their game against the Dominican Republic. I'm just curious what, if anything, you have heard from FIFA. It seems as though it's pretty late for them to make a decision that would change who you are playing tomorrow. But um, just what, have, what, if anything, have you heard? And have you heard or experienced anything from the fans back in the stands in uh, Guadalajara? No, I haven't uh, haven't heard anything in terms of any type of change changes. Obviously, <laughs> uh, you know it's it's a short it's a short period of time uh, for us. We're prepping for Mexico, so uh, we're assuming that it is Mexico and it's on. Uh, so, uh, in terms of anything from the fans or the stands, uh, we haven't heard anything uh, like that. Um, so obviously there's an investigation and we'll see how it goes. It didn't happen in our games. Uh, so I guess it's, uh, it's in FIFA's hands right now, but in terms of the game, we're focusing in on, on Mexico and preparing for Mexico, uh, at this point. Thank you very much, Sergio Venegas. Hi, good morning, coach Sergio Venegas from the Portrese. Do you realize how important is the game of tomorrow and what is the sensation between the team and you for the game of tomorrow? Because you could be one step to the Olympic Games. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, I had to, we had the meeting and the discussion with the players of how big this is for Canada. Um, you know, we talk about probably one of the biggest achievements in, in Canadian soccer history. Uh, to come through and win this game and and go on to the Olympics, uh, beating the the best team in in Concacaf in their country, uh, there's no doubt that uh, this this opportunity is massive 
uh, for for the for the team and and for the country. And uh, I think today and tomorrow we we not only represent uh, the team, but we represent a, a country uh, that is behind us. Uh, so for us, uh, it's it's you know it's it's great to be in this opportunity. Um, the players are ready to do everything they can uh, to make this happen. And, and and like I said, these 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 stories uh, ha have happened in sports, and it's a David and Goliath story right going on right now. And for us, is, is to do everything we can uh, to make this happen. Thank you very much, Manuel Medina. Uh, good morning, Coach. Uh, the best uh, defense is playing the best uh, offense of this tournament. How do you expect uh, tomorrow's game to actually play out? Thank you. Yeah, look, uh, when you when I look at this uh, Mexican team and that front line, uh, I'm very familiar with the front line in terms of Antuna, Alvarado. Um, you know, we had to play against them in the Gold Cup, and they did well against us with the first team. So we're well aware of their qualities, um, you know, their ability in the 1v1s and, and how they could provoke and make things happen. Uh, Cordova, Rodriguez, again, two very good players uh, that really play well between the lines and really operate their movements uh, coming into the box late. Uh, these are all things that we need to to mitigate and be aware of. And then the forwards, if it's Macias or or Vega, Vega also is a very good player, technical player that finds uh, spaces he could shoot from distance. So we know that that front five has has many qualities. Uh, and for us, it's it's you know we've been doing well in this tournament. We haven't given up a goal in in, in regular time. I think the mindset for us was always to stay compact and tight and not give space to the opponent and really be aggressive when we can be versus uh, these players. And, and I think, uh, you know, if we do that well, uh, we, we could slow the machine down and, uh, and grow. And it's about growing in this game and then believing uh, we could get uh, something out of it. Thank you very much. On va tourner en français pour deux questions. Gavino après Hadi. Gavino, s'il vous plaît. Merci, Richard. Salut, Moreau. Moreau, euh, écoute, je sais que ça va être une ambiance de finale demain contre le Mexique. Il n'y aura pas beaucoup de spectateurs, mais on sait que c'est un environnement très hostile. Écoute, Moreau, par le passé, vous avez déjà joué le, les, les rôles de négligé avec l'Impact de Montréal. Vous avez eu du succès en 2016 avec DC United, contre DC United et les Red Bulls de New York. Comment on se sent actuellement dans le rôle de négligé dans ce match-là contre le Mexique? Là? Oui, j'ai eu des expériences euh, euh, avec, euh, avec Montréal. Euh, C'est sûr que euh, ça commence avec une mentalité euh, euh, de croire qu'on on est capable de réussir. Et euh, avec ça, ça va, pousser, euh, ça va pousser tout le monde dans, dans la même direction. Et si je... Si je si je me rappelle euh, le, le match contre Club America en 2015 euh, à Azteca et euh, c'était un zéro. Je pense que euh, le plan de match de, de ce match était euh, extraordinaire. Euh, on était capable, c'était un zéro jusqu'à la fin, puis une, une, euh, une coup franc qui nous a fait mal. Mais euh, si je regarde et prends des choses et, et des leçons de ces matchs-là, Uh, quand j'étais entraîneur, entraîneur, entraîneur adjoint dans ce, ce match-là, uh, je pense que ça, ça a du valeur pour, pour notre équipe et comment on peut affronter uh, uh, des, une équipe comme le Mexique. Merci. Hadi, s'il vous plaît. Oui, merci Richard. Euh, bonjour Moreau. Euh, euh, Moreau, euh, tu as donné le, le, un peu le, ce qui se passe avec euh, Cornelius. Est-ce qu'on peut avoir un peu de nouvelles? Montgomery, euh, tu avais dit que c'était un peu compliqué. Est-ce qu'il est de retour? Et aussi, est-ce qu'on va voir euh, Zoran Basson au milieu de nouveau? Est-ce qu'on va le voir à, à, en latéral gauche? Est-ce qu'il y a une décision par rapport à ça? Oui, euh, au propos de, 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 de Derek, euh, il, il a subi une, une petite blessure. Euh, ça s'améliore à chaque jour. 
Aujourd'hui, il va avoir la chance pour euh, essayer. Euh, les docteurs m'ont dit qu'ils sont confiants, euh, qu'il va être disponible euh, pour aider l'équipe. Alors, on, on est, on est confiant euh, pour Derek. Avec euh, Montgomery, euh, lui aussi, il, il progresse de mieux en mieux. Euh, euh, en espérant qu'il peut être disponible. Euh, il y a quelques risques, ça c'est sûr. Euh, et je dois faire attention parce que je n'ai pas beaucoup d'options euh, euh, dans ces positions. Alors, euh, pour moi, il, il, il s'améliore. Et puis, euh, en espérant aujourd'hui que ça va mieux et, euh, et ils peuvent être tous les deux euh, disponibles. Avec Zoran, euh, 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 oui, euh, on l'a mis au milieu de terrain l'autre jour euh, pour aider euh, à appliquer cette pression sur les côtés. Euh, quand on animait en, en phase défensive, il était comme une, une, une milieu gauche. Euh, alors, euh, quand on animait avec le ballon, il était euh, plutôt au milieu. C'est sûr qu'on euh, peut le voir, on peut le voir euh, comme latéraux. Uh, on va finaliser tout ça uh, uh, quand, je sais, quand je vais avoir plus de clarité en les joueurs qui sont disponibles. Uh, on va prendre ces décisions-là. Mais c'est sûr qu'avec Zoran uh, sous le côté, uh, il peut amener quelque chose pour nous. Et uh, on va prendre cette décision uh, quand j'aurai plus d'informations. Merci beaucoup. Uh, on va tourner three questions, next three questions in English. John, followed by Derek and Neil. So, John Molinaro, please. So, hi, Mauro. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us. Um, what have you made of Mexico at this tournament thus far? And uh, what sort of problems do you envision them giving you guys tomorrow? Yeah, for me, is the, the thing that um, impressed me the most is just the their transition game is uh, is really at just another level. Uh, when they lose the ball, they recover it uh, quickly. Uh, but their their speed to get forward and transition to really hurt you now um, in, in those in, in those moments. Uh, and for me, what I take out of it is that you can't give them that space. And and sometimes uh, it's in that chaos that you could get hurt by a team like Mexico, where they'll really take advantage of you know a, a team in transition where they're not balanced. So for us, it's it's about having that balance all the time. Uh, that there's always somebody there. They're not they're not attacking that space, or they're not in isolation. Uh, so we need to to make sure we do a good job. At that, because um, you know they're a team that's going to make you that's going to make you pay. You saw the Americans in the game against the Americans; they were able to, um, you know, one mistake out of the back, and and it was in 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 behind and in the back of the net. So they have that quality uh, for sure. They have that experience, but for us, it's uh, it's all about space and not giving it to them, um, and then executing for us on the other end. We need to execute in those moments. Uh, when we have those opportunities and uh, and really manage that momentum the best we can in this game. Thank you very much, Derek. Well, I'm good, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Neil Davidson. Sorry about that, uh, Moro. Uh, you've brought uh, Lucas Diaz on about the same time in all three of the f first three games. Um, what's your rationale behind that, and, and what do you think he gives you when you bring him on? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, with, with Lucas, uh, you know, in terms of our pre-camp, we've had some players in isolations and some of our protocols and missed a lot of training uh, uh, throughout the week in the pre-camp. Uh, and we really wanted to now bring him into the games and give him give him some minutes. But, uh, you know, for us, it was important um, to not uh, just throw him in into games uh, without uh, without too much training because of some of the some of the protocols. So now we feel that he's gained experience. He's got a taste of, of uh, what uh, what it feels like in these international games. We saw what we what he could do. Um, so he becomes a, for sure an option, uh, his ability to, to get out of a, a situation, everything that I've seen uh, from him at Sporting when I brought him in, 
uh, he's been able to show that. It's a young player, a player that's hungry. Uh, and like I said, you know, uh, in terms of some of the circumstances that happened, uh, but now we feel he's gained enough of, uh, of minutes uh, to, to be ready possibly to start. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, thanks, Richard. Uh, hi, Morrow. Thanks for, for doing this. Morrow, the, the ball is round and anything can happen. Uh, this one could even go all the way. Have you been practicing penalties? Yeah, I think we, we need to be ready for everything. And uh, for sure, uh, we have to be ready for that situation, just like any other situation that could arise. I think as a coach, you want to prepare and make sure the players are ready uh, for every situation. And, and that's our job as a staff to bring that clarity. And PKs is, is a possibility. And uh, we need to, uh, you know, prepare for those moments and, and get this team uh, uh, as ready as they can be uh, for, for everything that, that could happen in this game. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll take the last question from Alexander. Hey, Mauro. Um, ever since maybe that first half against El Salvador, chances have kind of been hard to come by goals as well. You're going to need goals tomorrow against Mexico. How's the game plan to break down their tough, to, to, to break down defensive line? Yeah, I think for, for us, it's, you know, all about attacking uh, spaces, whether it's in a transition moment or whether it's in REO and, and some of our structures. And I think what's what's been missing is is, is just some timing, uh, our timing of some of our movements when we're on the ball and getting that execution uh, right. You know, if I, if I think of the Haiti game, you know, when you, when you go back and you look at the tactical footage, you really see that the spaces were there, but the timing was off or the ball was a bit too long or the quality wasn't there. And I think, uh, you know, it has to come together in a game like uh, versus Mexico because the chances won't be there. And then sometimes it's it's these little details of reading the cues early enough, um, you know, getting the timing right, and then you know the execution of it. Uh, I think the players know the structure; um, they know what the movements are. And, and, and in the end, if we're able to get that right in the right moments uh, to attack those spaces, then we're going to create chances. And uh, I think that's uh, that's that's the idea versus them. Uh, and, uh, you know, right now the players understand that. We've been working on that, watching a lot of video. I think when they see the pictures, sometimes in the game, it's tough. It's tough for a midfielder or a fullback when there's traffic in front of him. Uh, but when you review the footage and you see a tactical footage, uh, you'll see the amount of space and, and you see how uh, you could uh, attack it. Uh, but if you, you know, if you visualize it, you see it, then when it comes game time, uh, you know it's there and it's just about getting that timing right to, uh, to get in behind and create those chances. Thank you. We'll continue with CONCACAF Men's Olympic Qualifying Press Conference Match Day Minus One with Canada goalkeeper James Pantemis. Uh, we've got the hands raised uh, electronically. So we'll start to take questions, both in English and then in French. We'll start with Neil Davidson at the Canadian Press. Thank you, Richard. Hello, James. Your coach talked about how your team is facing the giant of CONCACAF uh, tomorrow. What is the mood of the players going into the game against the host team? Uh, I think uh, he said it exactly how it is right we're playing against host nation the favorites but that just gives us a little bit more motivation to take down the host in their country right uh we'll be going into that game obviously knowing we're the underdogs but we're going to feed off that and uh i think it would be a fantastic story not only to qualify for limits but to take down the host so that's what we'll be looking to do thank you thank you very much Derek. Hey, James. Um, I just want to ask you about the excitement of this. You, you win one game, regardless of who the opponent is, and you're at the Olympics. I guess, is there 
a real excitement uh, level that comes with with the fact of knowing that you're one win away from competing at an Olympic Games? Yeah, of course there is. I think um, just the fact that we've been put into this situation, this opportunity to represent uh, Canada at the Olympics is something that, I'll be honest, I don't think I ever dreamed about. And uh, we, we spoke about it last night. Uh, generally, football players dream of the World Cup. And uh, as an... I, just hold there for a quick technical. That. <laughs> Apologies for that, and uh, James will continue the answer. Uh, yeah, well, I guess I'll restart it just in case. Um, yeah, the we have an amazing opportunity in front of us, right? Um, being able to qualify for the Olympics is something, like I said, um, I don't think I've ever dreamed about it because my initial dream, and I think any footballer's dream, would, to, would be to qualify for the World Cup and play in the World Cup. But an athlete's dream is the Olympics. That is the highest competition possible and the most prestigious tournament for them. And I think just the fact that we're 90 minutes away from it, um, regardless of the team that we're, we're facing, it's just one game, 90 minutes. And I have a feeling that if we put everything out there, we leave it all out, um, guys are playing for each other, working together, we have a, we have a chance to, to make history and, and make the country proud. So that's what we'll be doing uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much, Derek. We'll turn now to Adam Jenkins. Thanks, Richard, and good morning, James. It's I actually wanted to get that previous question in, so I'll ask if you could just maybe take it a step further. When you think about being an Olympian, just to just to be able to have that forever associated with your name and your team, um, do you let yourself think about what that experience might be like, and and do you look back on some of the incredible achievements that the women's side has made, and and just if you could speak a little bit further on what being an Olympian would mean to you and your teammates. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we have a staff member here who's been a part of the Olympics, a coach, Andrew Oliveri, who actually won bronze with the, the woman back in London. Uh, he's, he's, you know, sharing his experiences, um, what he went through, what the team went through to get to that stage. And it's just something that, to me, would be life-changing. And I think it would be life-changing for the for the team as well, right? Uh, like I said before, we, we've been given a, a, a tremendous opportunity to, to make history, to do something that hasn't been done in a very long time. And there's no greater sense of motivation, I feel like, for, for myself personally and for the team. And I think we're, we're up for the challenge and we're ready to, to, to take that step onto the field on Sunday and, and try and qualify for the Olympics. Thank you very much. We'll turn to a couple of questions in French, starting with Dave Levesque. Dave, c'est votre tour. Oui. Merci, Richard. Euh, bonjour, James. Et euh, avant de poser une question, euh, je te souhaite la meilleure des chances. Euh, J'espère que ça, se, ça fonctionne pour vous, les gars. Euh, question euh, super simple, euh, puisque tu es, es bien placé pour voir tes gars travailler en défensive. Euh, Vous avez seulement accordé un but en trois matchs jusqu'à maintenant. Euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez appliquer exactement la même recette euh, défensive contre le Mexique ou considérant l'adversaire, il y a certains euh, ajustements à apporter? Ah, bien sûr. Euh, premièrement, je suis, je suis très content euh, du travail que notre défensive euh, a fait autour de ce tournoi-là. Comme tu l'as dit, un but en trois matchs, euh, c'est très bien pour une équipe aussi. On a... C'est important à noter qu'on n'a pas perdu un match à date. Donc, euh, on va essayer de, de bâtir sur, ce, sur ces statistiques-là. Euh, ensuite, euh, bien sûr qu'il faut ajuster. Euh, chaque match, on s'ajuste au, au, euh, aux qualités des, des autres équipes. Euh, au, euh, donc, ça va être, on sait que ça va être un match euh, très difficile. Ils ont des, des attaquants qui sont très bons, beaucoup d'expérience. On a vu euh, durant les matchs, durant le tournoi, qu'ils créent beaucoup de chances, beaucoup de centres, ils frappent de, de loin aussi, donc on doit être prêt pour ça. Et je crois que le, le staff technique ici, 
a mis une bonne, euh, bonne tactique en place pour nous, pour qu'on soit prêt pour, euh, pour notre adversaire demain. Merci beaucoup. Gavino, s'il vous plaît. Oui, salut James, c'est Gavino de MFC Radio. Écoute, James, sachant très bien que si vous voulez vous l'emporter demain, il va falloir que tu joues un rôle quand même très important. Euh, je veux dire, comment tu composes avec toute la pression qui vient avec ce match-là demain? Merci. Euh, ben pour moi, personnellement, je crois que euh, c'est un match euh, comme un autre. Euh, on sait que peut-être l'adversaire, c'est un peu plus, ben, un, beaucoup plus euh, difficile que qu ce qu'on a vu à date. Mais euh, je suis... Je suis prêt pour le, pour le challenge. Je sais que notre défensive aussi, euh, notre backline, euh, même, même toute l'équipe, je dirais, pour, euh, pour l'aspect défensif, on est prêt pour, pour ce, ce challenge-là. Euh, ensuite, euh, à la fin de la journée, on sait que ça va être très difficile, mais euh, on a eu plusieurs discussions ensemble euh, entre, entre la défensive et moi-même et les, les entraîneurs. Et, je sais qu'on va, on va avoir besoin de tout le monde, même les joueurs qui commencent ainsi que les joueurs qui, qui vont rentrer pour finir le match. Donc, pour nous, notre mentalité, c'est de, de rentrer sur le terrain, donner le maximum possible, essayer d'éviter euh, les, les petites erreurs peut-être euh, et ensuite jouer notre jeu. On est là pour une raison. On est là pour, euh, pour représenter le pays, pour qualifier pour euh, les Jeux olympiques et c'est ça qu'on va faire. Merci beaucoup, Gabino. Uh, we'll turn to Sergio Venegas. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Uh, deux questions, s'il vous plaît. La première question, c'est um, vous mangez avec la cuisine mexicaine, qu'est-ce que vous aimez? À la, à la seconde, vous ne comprenez pas qu ce que les Jux avec le National Team of Mexique. Uh, Excusez-moi, va ma français, c'est ma première langue. Ma première langue, c'est espagnol. Uh, nous sommes avec les. Premier sport déportif de portraits avec Mexique, s'il vous plaît. Mais, uh, good, good luck for tomorrow. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Are we good for? Did you understand the question? Oh, yeah, so, oh there's a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pardon, j'ai pas, pas compris la question. Oh, uh, je, je répète. Uh, so, I, I can do it in English if you want. Sorry. Whatever yes, the, please. I, just didn't, I couldn't hear it. Sorry about that. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Well, I was asking you in French because it's not my natural language. Uh, if you have time to to taste any Mexican cuisine, and the second one, uh, you facing the first uh, 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 offensive team as a goalkeeper. What what are you worry about that? And good luck for tomorrow. Sorry for for the inconvenience. Oh, no problem. No problem. Well, I think if I understood the first question correctly, it was about Mexican cuisine. Uh, it's got to be the tacos. The fajita has been great so far, but. Uh, Uh, in terms of uh, facing Mexico, an attacking threat, like you mentioned, um, we're well aware of their threats. We're well aware of the kind of players they have. We know it's going to be a, a very big challenge for us, but uh, we'll be prepared. And I think that uh, as a unit, as a back line, as a team, we're going to put in a structure in place. We're going to put um, our maximum effort in that game. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take everybody, not only myself, but guys to block shots, guys to make sure that we're tracking runners. And... Um, Like I said, we're up for the challenge. It's going to be it's going to be a great one, and for me, uh, and I know if I speak for the whole team, we're we're looking forward to it. Good, thank you. I think we have time for a couple more questions. John, followed by Neil, and then Adam. Hi, James. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, it's two clean sheets and one goal against for Canada, and obviously you've had a hand in in that. But what was what's been your impression of the four guys in front of you? How has sort of the defense contributed to? You know, Canada's strong defensive showing this far. I think we've been excellent so far. Um, obviously, we've had um, a couple of injuries throughout the throughout the, the three games. We've had uh, David Norman stepping into a not a natural position for himself, but he's he's been one of our best defenders, and I'm I'm super happy for him. I'm super happy for the whole team. Um, the way we we communicate to each other, the way we we work together, I think, is something that um, you don't necessarily see on TV. But the way we're backing each other up, the way we're we're communicating, making sure we're sliding, making sure we're covering each other, I think it's been excellent, and I'm really proud of uh, what they've done in front of me. Uh, obviously, I got their back if ever something would happen, just like they got my back if ever uh, I mess up a pass or I make a mistake, and that's just what uh, drives us. And I think that's what's going to take us to the next level and to to hopefully uh, the finals and to the Olympics. Thank you very much, Neil Davidson. 
Thank you, Richard. James, it's it's unusual to have uh, the under twenty three team and the uh, the senior team playing at the same time in big competitions. Obviously, you've been following. I'm sure you you and your teammates have been following uh, John Herdman's team as closely as you can. Has there been any interaction between the two teams? Yeah, of course. I think uh, uh, we feed off each other, right? Uh, obviously, we have a relationship with certain players, whether it's from club or just coming in together in cap and country. And uh, we both know what's at stake for both our programs that are working towards the World Cup qualification. We're working towards uh, Olympic qualification. And uh, even uh, the, the slightest of messages that is related either tomorrow or um, to John and then the players speaking to each other on their own. And I know now that we both have our, our final games. Um, well, they had their final game in the qualification and we have our, our deciding game for us. Um, the messages are there, the motivation is there, and we're all behind each other, right? And once again, like I mentioned at the beginning, we feed off each other's results. We've seen Canada pull up, uh, put five as Bermuda. Uh, I, I believe they'll play before us again, um, before our semifinal, and we'll be aware of the score. We'll know what they did, and we're going to look to to build on that and make sure we, we go two for two in the wins. Thank you very much, and we'll wrap up with Adam Jenkins. James, Mar had mentioned, obviously, that you guys are preparing for every potential event in this game, and that includes PKs. So which of your teammates have been perhaps the cheekiest or caused you any trouble in training? And when was the last time um, you've been in, a, in such a big PK potential environment like we might have tomorrow? Uh, in terms of sharing, I'll just keep that to myself in case anybody's watching at the time. But... Uh... Uh, no, this guys are guys are will be ready for it. Right? We take shots at training. Um, uh, there's a couple of guys that asked me to stay back, or the other keepers as well, to work on that. We've been working on it from the beginning, and I know that um, if it comes to that, they'll be up for it. Um, in terms of my last time in that in that environment, um, there was also there was the uh, Canadian Championship final that I wasn't playing, but uh, our other keeper Clément Diop was in it that we won against Toronto. So just being a part of it was great. But my, for myself personally. Um, I got to take it back to uh, when I was 13, 14, uh, regional team, Lac St. Louis, where one of our actually coaches here, Mike Vitulano, was our head coach. And uh, it was Lac St. Louis against Concordia. Once again, we were the underdogs. No one expected us to be there. No one expected us to go to toe to toe with them. I ended up going into the shootout. Uh, we won, I believe, 4 2. Uh, I was lucky enough to save two of them. And if it ever comes to that point again today, um, I'm confident. I'm confident in myself. I'm confident in my, in my players' ability to, to put the ball in the back of the net. And um, yeah, that's it.